Welcome everyone. I'm going to continue admitting people in. Thanks for being here. There he is. Why isn't he up on the screen? Mute button, yes. Right there. Welcome everyone. Um, I'm going to continue keeping an eye on the the lobby and admit people as they come in. Thanks for being here today. Uh, welcome. You'll notice that your um, camera, you can't turn your camera on. Uh, there's some setting on the back end that um, that needs to be adjusted that we won't worry about for now, but you do have audio capabilities. There's a there is a little button up in the right hand corner that looks like a microphone that says mic underneath it. Um, if you wouldn't mind muting yourself by clicking that button. Um, and we're going to let other people join and then we'll get going. Thanks a lot for being here. Welcome everyone. We'll get going in just a moment. Seeing 31 people, that's a good turnout for a Tuesday afternoon. Thanks for being here. I see most people have muted themselves. If you wouldn't mind clicking that mute button in the top right. And we will have time for questions and discussion, um, but I think we'll try to save that for the end of the presentation, which isn't isn't so long. Um, there's also a, a chat function. Um, so maybe in the chat, hoping everybody has access to this, um, you could say hi, and maybe you could put your name in, um, and say if you're a resident or a, a neighbor. Uh, my colleagues are here, Ruben and Hun Wen. Can you confirm you have access to the chat? Hi, Jimmy. This is Ruben. I do have access to the chat. I'll introduce myself there. I do not have the ability to turn my camera on. Okay. okay. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks for being here. I'm Hun uh, Wen. I am also on the call and have access to the chat. Thanks, Hun Wen. Um, I'm going to do my best. I, it also looks like my colleagues Ruben and Hunwen do not have access to letting people in, so I'm going to have to. It's kind of a one person operation on the on the back end here. Um, so I'm going to present, but I'm also uh, going to keep an eye on the um, waiting room, the lobby to let people in. So. I apologize if um, it's a little jumbled here. We'll do our best. See some people putting some stuff in the chat. Thanks a lot. We'll get going in just a moment. And a reminder to please mute yourself up in the top right corner of, of the T Microsoft Teams screen. Um, that would be helpful. Thanks. All right, well, I'm not seeing anybody else immediately join, so I think we can get going. Um, a reminder, I don't know if you got it when you when you joined the meeting, this is recorded and uh, that's just so I can take this recording and post it to the web page and so other people can can check it out at, at some point. Um, there's also a function that allows you to raise your hand, so maybe I can share this screen and kind of point people to where. Um, so here, this is a Microsoft Teams meeting. Um, there's a chat there and I appreciate everybody putting um, their names. If you're willing, you can put your name or you can say I'm a resident at XYZ or whatever street. Um, 
There's also a raise hand function. You can click on this and your hand is raised. Um, and I think that'll be most important towards the end of the hour or after the presentation. Um, Ruben, can you see who's raising their hands and kind of point that out to me when the time comes? Sure thing, Jimmy. I sure, I sure can. Thanks. Um, you can also react if you really love what we're talking about. You can love it. Or you can laugh. Or you can clap. Um, I'm sorry, there's not a thumbs down button. Um, anyhow, I think we can get going. Um, Excuse me. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, I'm only on by phone. Okay. Uh, it did not say in the letter that this was on Microsoft Teams. I did try to just log in off of the web. So first of all, it did say it was on Teams. So sorry, I can't do that today. Um, how do people participate who are only on the phone? Um, and who uh, and who are you? Sorry, I can't see you. I didn't hear you introduce yourself either. Uh, no problem at all. Um, yes, there is a call in option. There's also a link to join via Microsoft Teams. So um, we wanted to give both options. Yeah. Un I can't unfortunately, have Microsoft Teams loaded and the letter did not say to have it, the app loaded. Uh, no, you, you don't need to have, you don't need to have Microsoft Teams loaded. Okay, because it won't come up on my computer or the website, so I don't know. Okay, but how do you participate just by phone? Please give us the uh, etiquette. Sure, thanks. Um, I'd say we're gonna, my, my name is Jimmy Shoemaker. I'm with the Department of Public Works at the City of St. Paul. Um, I'm working. I'm, jo I'm working with uh, two people who are joining us: uh, Ruben Collins and Hunwen Westman. And we'll we'll do another round of introductions here in a second. Yes, there are some people who joined on uh, their phones via a call-in number. There are some people who joined on a device like a computer or your phone or a, 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 a iPad or similar. Um, and then there, um, and those people can see my my screen. And then there are other people, I think, on the phone, as you mentioned, that can't see my screen. And I I do intend to post this presentation. Um, it is being recorded, so um, when the time comes, you can come back and watch the presentation, or you can also call me or email me, um, and we can talk on the phone that way too. Thank you. Thank you. All right, um, if people could hold their questions till the end of the presentation, we can go back to slides in the presentation that I'm gonna share, um, uh, but I wanna make sure that we get through this before we before we answer questions. Um, all right, I'm gonna get going. Please uh, do mute yourself uh, if, if, you're, if you're calling in or if you um, are joining, please go up to the top if you're on Teams and click that mic button and that will mute yourself. All right, um, let's get going. Thanks a lot for being here. Um, you are here to learn about uh, the 2023 Fairview Avenue resurfacing project. Um, I wanna talk about uh, just a general project overview, um, some existing conditions, uh, what, we, what we plan to change on the street, um, and then some related projects that I know a lot of you all are familiar with, um, upcoming projects both this year and next year that are kind of in the neighborhood. And then talk about some additional opportunities for engagement. Um, on your right, we'll probably look familiar. This is a photo, I believe, at Bayard in Fairview um, of a young person crossing Fairview on, on their bike. Um, uh, as you know, it, uh, Probably many of you got the letter in the mail um, to, to, to advertise the project, to let you know that this is happening. It is a, uh, the project goes from Randolph to Edgecombe, Randolph on the north and Edgecombe on the south. Um, and part of the resurfacing will result in a smoother roadway for people driving and biking. Um, you're not seeing the slides on the screen. Can someone else? Tell me that that's the case. I can see him, Jimmy. Okay. Looks like Michael Lee, Kevin Gallatin can see them. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Um. All right. Um. 
Uh, it also uh, result in improved pedestrian crossings at several of the intersections. Um, there also be upgrades to the curb ramps to make them ADA compliant, Americans with Disabilities Act compliant, which is something we do with all our projects. Um, and as many of you know, there will be some access changes to um, intersections at Fairview and Eleanor, Boland and Saunders, and we're going to talk a lot about that. Um, this will happen uh, this summer. Um, the pedestrian improvements, um, both the medians and the the bump outs and the curb ramps will will happen probably, uh, you know, maybe sometime in the middle of the summer. We don't know specific dates quite yet. Um, the actual resurfacing, the repaving of of um, Fairview will happen probably in September or October. Um, the changes that we're going to talk about are planned changes. Um, a lot of questions came in about, are you doing this? Is there an opportunity to to change this? Uh, we are certainly there is an opportunity. We are seeking input and um, talking with the community to learn more about how these might impact you um, and, and how the changes will will impact uh, uh, the neighborhood. So we are interested in learning about that. Um, as of now, these are planned, but um, but we are interested in learning about how you know these impacts will will affect you. Um, existing conditions, you all live in the neighborhood, so I won't spend a lot of time on this. Um, uh, the street Fairview is wider north of Highland Parkway, um, and then it's it's less wide south of Highland Parkway. There are uh, shoulders and bike lanes um, along the corridor between Randolph and Edgecombe. Um, there are sidewalks on both sides for for some portions, um, but then we do know that there are missing sidewalks uh, on the west side of Fairview, north of Highland Parkway. Uh, there's no transit service. Um, uh, the speed limit is 25 miles per hour posted, um, 8,800 vehicles per day, and that um, how that compares to, to streets on either side. There's, you know, there's 14,000 vehicles on Snelling, and then there's kind of a range on Cleveland in the same area. So Fairview kind of falls between uh, between Snelling and Cleveland. And as you know, it's uh, largely residential along the corridor, single family home, of course, with the exception of, um, of St. Kate's on the north um, and a bit of SPA, St. Paul Academy kind of uh, on the north end also. This yellow line that I've drawn in there, um, it's been mentioned by the by community members several times that uh, there's a sidewalk gap on the west side, kind of along St. Kate's, but even further to the south. Um, uh, a question has come up several times, understandably, is this project going to add sidewalks uh, to those missing portions? Um, we are in touch with St. Kate's um, and we don't have anything definitive yet about that. We are talking with them in hopes that um, we could add sidewalk along along their frontage. Um, but off of their frontage, there are um, there are quite a few challenges with building sidewalks on that portion. As you can see in this photo, um, uh, numerous trees would likely have to come down with sidewalk construction. Um, there are a number of kind of private property, whether they be plantings or um, in some cases, maybe even fences that encroach into the public right of way. So there would be some significant challenges with with constructing sidewalk as part of this project. Um, that isn't to say that this that in the future, the sidewalk couldn't be added, but as as part of this project in 2023, um, uh, sidewalks are not are not being considered, and we can talk more about that if people have questions. Uh, and more questions have also come up. Hey, uh, on the on the portion kind of where it's narrower on Fairview, uh, sidewalks are are on what we call the back of curb, so there's no boulevard, um, and that's that we typically we see boulevards on our neighborhood streets in in St. Paul. And um, so this is kind of a unique scenario uh, to add boulevards again would be um, uh, another 
another element of the project. Um, we did in 2022 apply for federal funding to recon totally reconstruct Fairview, a, a portion of this of this project. And that would the, the goal of that application for federal money was to um, reconstruct Fairview totally. We were not successful in getting that that money. It would have been about eight million dollars. Um, that would have been something we would have addressed these back of curb sidewalks. But as part of this specific resurfacing project, um, uh, adding boulevards and adding sidewalk uh, are not currently planned. So what is planned? Um, resurfacing of the pavement. Um, we know that Fairview, like many other streets in St. Paul, are in bad shape. Uh, there's a lot of potholes. Um, so this project will resurface what we call a mill and overlay, uh, generally grind off the top few inches of pavement and then repave it with a fresh coat of pavement. Um, that makes it a, a smoother experience for uh, driving and biking. It also extends the life of the road um, without taking on a, a much more costly reconstruction. The pedestrian improvements that we're talking about that I'm sure you all are aware of are, are medians and bump outs. Um, and the, the point of those is to, to improve safety along the corridor, both for people walking and ideally to slow traffic down uh, cars driving on, on Fairview. We hear all the time about um, some safety concerns on Fairview, but we know that that's it, it's a generally a problem across the entire city traffic speeds. We know a lot of people drive the speed limit, but there are um, there are cars out there. I'm sure you all are aware that that do not. Um, and so the pedestrian improvements will will help help pedestrians, but also hope uh, the goal is to to slow traffic down. Also, uh, these crossing improvements that are planned um, uh, break up the crossing into multiple stages, um, so you can cross one leg of traffic and in 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 terms of the medians, you can cross one lane of traffic, have a place to pause in the middle, and then cross the other lane of traffic. Um, hello, welcome. If you could please mute yourself, uh, that'd be great. Uh, welcome, please do mute yourself up in the top right corner if you're joining. Um, uh, they also improve visibility. So a lot uh, bump outs um, get people crossing out closer to the intersection. Um, and a lot of times we hear from drivers who who don't yield. Oh, I, I didn't even see someone waiting to cross. Uh, bump outs bump the curb space out um, and they improve visibility for people um, driving and people walking. Um, a lot of questions have come in. Why, why these locations? Why are you choosing these locations? Um, we we know that installing just one location or uh, isn't going to make the changes that we want. Um, so we want to space them along the corridor so we can get kind of a traffic calming effect for the entire length. So people can't just slow down at, at one place and then speed up again. We'd prefer that um, it's calmed throughout the entire corridor. Um, Fairview, there is space, uh, according to our traffic engineers. Um, there is space in the in the street that can be repurposed um, and used for these these pedestrian crossings. So we're looking at uh, at those locations where there is extra space. Uh, we mentioned at the top of the meeting that there are uh, some missing sidewalks, and so these median and bump out uh, crossing locations also serve to connect sidewalks. And then finally, um, you all know that there are a number of schools in the neighborhood and the locations of the pedestrian improvements were chosen um, uh, because of their proximity to school crossings. Uh, we've heard for a long time from the schools that Fairview is a challenge for students to cross. We've heard from neighbors um, uh, parents and, and families who, who would like to walk to school, but they don't feel safe crossing Fairview. So this is in response uh, in response to that. Um, at Eleanor Boland and Saunders, 
Sorry, I'm doing my best to admit people as they, they join. Hello, welcome. If you could please mute yourself as you join. Thank you. I'm going to mute that. No. Um, at Eleanor Boland and Saunders um, is where we plan for medians that um, stretch across the intersection. Um, that are shown over there on the right side of your screen. Uh, they provide a better pedestrian experience. You can imagine um, a median that that is only partially closed would still allow cars to turn across um, the pathway of a, of a person walking. Um, they also eliminate through traffic from one side of Fairview to the other. So that's another reason why we're we want ideally um, traffic on Eleanor and Boland and Saunders to be residents accessing their homes. Uh, we don't want uh, cars driving through the neighborhood that are just passing through. So um, while they do benefit pedestrians for sure, and that is the goal, um, there is also a benefit uh, to lowering the amount of traffic on, on these streets. Um, they will create what's called a right in, right out turn restriction, and I'll talk about that more in a moment. Um, and as many of you know, uh, there is a 2024 project on Snelling Avenue in this same area uh, led by MnDOT. Um, and those similarly have um, some turning restrictions. Um, those are not on the same cross streets. So the the the, the medians considered at um, on Snelling uh, are not the same cross streets as the ones that we are proposing. I want to take a pause and just um, highlight that um, there is a lot of research that has um, that um, that says that medians are a proven safety countermeasure. Uh, these are two figures and graphics that um, that are produced both, both at the federal level from the Federal Highway Department and uh, the Minnesota Department of Transportation that talk much more about the safety benefits of, of medians. Um, and I will post these on the web page uh, so you can kind of read over them. Uh, you'll notice on these on these on these pages on these figures that are shown here that they do talk about um, uh, crash reductions, and I, I th there have been several questions that have come in that have that have asked, um, understandably, about um, have there been crashes here? Uh, we've received several emails and calls asking about, um, you know, what is the safety concern here? I've never seen a crash at this intersection. Um, and that is that is a good question. Um, the crashes are an important thing to consider, uh, but the city does not rely solely on the presence of a crash to determine where we make improvements. Uh, so we don't wait for a crash to happen and then and then make an improvement. Uh, when we have the opportunity because of another larger project, we take that opportunity to make safety improvements when we can, even if there are no crashes. Um, the lack of crashes does not indicate that the crossing should not be improved. Um, you know, there are we we have received emails and calls saying I support these me, these medians. Um, I have nearly been hit by a car or I don't feel comfortable crossing. Therefore, I don't walk in the neighborhood or cross. Um, so near misses. Um, someone walking and nearly getting hit or feeling uncomfortable, that does not go reported and it doesn't go into a crash database. So there, um, just because there is not a crash present at this intersection, um, that doesn't mean that we shouldn't improve the intersection. And the same is true for pedestrian counts. Um, uh, you know, a lot of people have emailed saying um, that uh, uh, I've never I don't see very many people crossing. Other people say I do cross and I would like to walk more, except I feel unsafe doing so. Um, so uh, the it, just because we don't see people crossing doesn't mean that we shouldn't make improvements. 
so I want to talk about Eleanor Boland and Saunders. This was um, kind of described in the in the letters that went out. This is an example in St. Paul. I'm using this as an example along Maryland Avenue and the North End um, that would would be something similar to the, what we we plan for Fairview. Uh, you can see there's a median that goes across uh, the intersection of the side street. Um, there are signs posted to indicate that there's a crossing here. And you'll notice that um, cars can go straight. Uh, this black car here in the foreground can take a right onto that street. This truck coming towards us can take a right onto that street, but you'll notice that each of these cars cannot take a left. Um, and again, uh, that's just to provide a more comfortable pedestrian experience, and it's also to limit the amount of kind of cut through traffic um, uh, that we're trying to limit. Here's another example, kind of an overhead shot of that same um, installation on Maryland. You notice that you can go straight through. Uh, you can take a right. So imagine, uh, imagine you're um, driving from Randolph and you're headed southbound on Fairview. Uh, if you're coming southbound on Fairview at Saunders, Bolin, and Eleanor, you can still take a right. Um, you can still go straight. Uh, you can be coming from Ford Parkway to the north and you can go straight and you can still take a right. Um, and you can come off of each of those streets and take a right onto to Fairview. Um, the restrictions are shown here. Um, again, unable to take a left, the restrictions would uh, would prohibit left turns um, from from Fairview on to Boland, Eleanor, Saunders, and it would also prohibit a left turn from Fairview uh, on to Eleanor, Boland, and Saunders. We call this a right in, right out. Um, and we've heard from a lot of folks um, saying that um, that this is going to be an inconvenience, and we understand that the drivers, the drivers in the neighborhood, some will have to make changes to how they reach their destination. We're making a, a decision to balance um, the inconvenience um, with the safety benefits. And that's kind of a, a trade off that 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 we're willing to make. Um, here are a couple examples. Um, here's a fair view at Eleanor. Um, say you live here in this house circled in yellow and a median goes in. Um, you will still be able to reach um, your home directly if you're coming from the north. Um, if you're coming from the south, uh, there are other ways that you can go. You can go up to Bayard, take a left, then take a left. Here's another example of someone who lives maybe on the corner there of, I believe that's Sue. Uh, Sue and Bayard uh, uh, and Eleanor. Um, if you're coming from uh, from the north, or rather from the south, go up to Bayard, take a left, and then another, another left. Say you live down there in that yellow circle. Um, if you're coming from the south, we want to direct you to streets that are made to take more traffic volumes, like Highland Parkway. Go down to Highland Parkway and then go up and reach your destination. Um, there are a few other changes at Highland Parkway. Um, bump outs are proposed. Those won't change vehicle access at all. Um, there is a median that's proposed at uh, the Carondelet um, entrance. I believe it's called Gate 4, um, the second driveway south of Randolph. Uh, that is to allow someone um, uh, to reach the sidewalk that exists on the east side. There's no sidewalk on the west side in that location. So we are planning to install a median there so someone can cross uh, um, some, se some seniors uh, living at uh, Carondelet to get them to uh, a, a safer crossing across Fairview to the, reach the, the sidewalk on the east side of the street. Uh, there won't be any changes to on-street parking as part of this project. I mentioned there are some upcoming projects um, that I'm sure you all are aware of. Um, the county, uh, Ramsey County um, owns um, uh, Cleveland and Randolph in this area, and both of those streets are being planned for 
uh, a resurfacing, a similar resurfacing. And um, uh, also shown in, in the blue um, on Edgecombe further south, uh, that street is being completely reconstructed uh, this year by the city. And we are coordinating with the county, with Ramsey County for both the Cleveland and Randolph um, Avenue resurfacing projects. We know there's gonna be a lot of construction in the area. Generally, when we do resurfacing projects, um, uh, access remains open. Generally, we kind of do it um, at one lane at a time. So um, we don't anticipate full closures of the street for, for any of those projects. Uh, looking forward to 2024, um, I mentioned, and some of you probably know, there is a MnDOT project, um, and that project will um, uh, uh, widen the sidewalk on the west side of the street between uh, Ford and Montreal. It'll also replace the signal at Montreal, and it will also add a shared use path on the east side where there's where there is none of Snelling. It will also add medians, uh, similar medians to the ones that we are constructing at Hillcrest, Beechwood, and Rome. And so you can see that, um, you know, a median will not be constructed uh, on both Fair at, on both Fairview and Snelling at the same cross streets. And that was coordinated between the two projects. Looking forward to next steps. Um, thank you for attending the meeting today. We're going to have time for some questions. I hear a lot of uh, chats. Um, so thank you for being here today. Uh, I will be at the Highland District Council Transportation Fair, which is organized by the Highland District Council. Um, that is uh, this Thursday, May 11th at 6.30 p.m. at Gloria Day Lutheran Church at 700 North Snelling Avenue. Um, there's also a separate project meeting for this Fairview project. Uh, we'll be presenting a lot of the same information at that. You're welcome and encouraged to join that meeting on May 17th at Highland Middle School. Uh, it will be a lot of the same information um, at, that, at that project um, meeting. You can contact me, my, my phone number and my email address. I'll leave it up on screen here in a moment. Um, there is a feedback form that we've received about 28 responses to as of this morning uh, that's on the project web page. Again, that's stpaul.gov slash Fairview resurfacing, and you can submit um, uh, your, your thoughts there, or you can email me also. So that concludes the, the formal presentation. Um, I want to put my information up on on the screen while we while we all talk. So uh, Ruben, I'm, I guess I've turned to you to to kind of moderate this and Hunlin and Ruben are here also uh, as experts in this to to help answer questions. Yep, thanks, Jimmy. This is uh, just a reminder. This is Ruben Collins. I work really closely with Jimmy and uh, the Department of Public Works. Uh, Jimmy and Hunlin in Public Works. We have a lot of questions in the um, chat box and so I'm going to uh, scroll up to the top and and kind of walk through them and I'll try and um, summarize the questions and either try and answer some of them myself or ask Jimmy or Hunwin to um, uh, to chime in. So uh, the first question I see here is, is this traffic design in use in other spots in St. Paul? Um, what have been the results other cities? Um, I'm not sure if this is specifically related to the medians, but I guess I'm kind of interpreting it that way. Um, Jimmy, you had shown one of uh, an exam a photo of a similar median. Um, I think it was on Maryland. Um, so, I, so the answer to that is, is yes. This is this is a pretty typical treatment. There, you can find medians um, that uh, uh, that. Uh, that do um, we call it access control? That's a little bit of a jargony term, but uh, that prohibits some turning uh, movements. Here um, is a pretty common approach. There's this example here that Jimmy is showing. Um, also, if you look all up and down streets like Snelling, Lexington, uh, lots of examples of that. Um, as Jimmy also shared, um, medians are a pretty widely accepted uh, safety improvement. Um, lots of documentation to back that up from 
Federal Highway Administration, FinDOT, and other agencies. Um, let's see, next question I see here. Ramsey County is doing a mill and overlay of Randolph Avenue in late summer. How do you see the project coinciding with that project? It's a really great question. Jimmy, you spoke to this a little bit. You also mentioned that Ramsey County has a similar project on Cleveland. And I will say from our staff perspective, we've been more focused on coordination with the Cleveland project since Cleveland and Fairview are both similar north-south routes and are likely looking to try and detour traffic to each other during construction. Um, we are coordinating with the county. It is our goal to make sure that we don't have traffic restrictions on both Fairview and Cleveland at the same time. Can't guarantee that that will be the case, but uh, that's um, that's what we're trying to get uh, to right now. Um, here's another question. Pedestrian bump outs and medians will make it harder for emergency vehicles to access our streets. How will this impact the safety and response for people who need urgent help? Jimmy, do you want to um, talk a little bit about our coordination with emergency services? Sure. Yeah, um, that's a great that's a great point. Um, we've heard that from some other folks too. Uh, whenever we do these kind of access changes, we do always coordinate with uh, fire and emergency services. Um, and there are other examples across uh, a town, as Ruben has mentioned. Uh, where we do do this, where we've done these access changes and um, fire uh, department, you know, they are uh, skilled professionals in, in taking and taking the shortest route and they are aware of any access changes that we make and that goes into how they reach uh, an emergency. So we will continue coordinating with them and having specific conversations about um, about these access changes at Boland and Eleanor and uh, Saunders. Thanks, Ruben. Thanks, Jimmy. The next question I see here, I'm going to ask Han Wen to respond to this one. Um, the question is about, uh, you know, any traffic studies done to determine the impact to Highland Parkway was a specific question. I'd say let's kind of widen that question a bit and just say generally, um, what does this mean for uh, for the streets adjacent to uh, where the medians will go. Is this going to result in more traffic on those streets? If so, how much? What can we say about that, Hanwen? Yeah, so um, we did kind of a high level look at the area. And in general, the streets in the cross streets uh, in the area are low volume, uh, primarily residential streets where volumes are generally like in a couple hundred per day. Um, even if those volumes were to reroute all onto one street, that is still a very, very low volume street uh, by city street standards, city traffic standards, uh, and not just the city, um, industry-wide. So yes, volumes may go up, but they are still considered very low volume. And then on top of that, I would add that uh, the rerouting of traffic will depend on where people are coming from and going to. So not all of those volumes will go all to one street. So you take the low volumes to begin with and then disperse them and the additional traffic um, is very, very small. Thanks, um, next question I see here, I'll take this question myself. It's a uh, question is uh, noting that there is no ex existing turn lanes on Fairview at Fairview and Saunders. It's there's just kind of a striped center line with one travel lane in each direction. So the question is, you know, how exactly is a median going to fit in here? That's a really good question. Um, there is the, you know, there's one travel lane in each direction on this part of Fairview. Um, but the travel lanes, the existing travel lanes are quite wide by industry standards. So, um, you know, we we know the street is about 40 feet wide. And so we have kind of mapped this out that there is still space for a tr industry standard lane in each direction um, and a median in the middle um, and still have the kind of shoulder bike lane space on the sides for for people on uh, on bikes. Um, so that means the, the median won't be um, all that wide, but uh, wide enough to provide a refuge for pedestrians. 
Um, the next question I see is what is the impact to a line or 74 uh, bus route 74 service during the project? Uh, that's a really good question. Um, don't know the answer to that. I wouldn't expect I wouldn't expect much impact to either of those during construction. Um, but if so, uh, Metro Transit would be the uh, the agency that would put out service alerts related to serv any service disruptions. But I wouldn't guess there would be much. Um, the next question I see here is about um, uh, crossing guards at school, and it, uh, I, I, I'll kind of expand the question here to say what what have we, um, Jimmy? I'll, I'll toss this question your direction. What what have we um, what have our conversations been with schools? What have we heard from schools about people walking to school and their ability to um, help ensure safe routes for people trying to get to schools? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, as you all know, there are schools kind of on either side of Fairview. Um, we have spoken with the district, both the transportation department and the individual schools, and um, their staff is supportive of, of these projects. Um, we've also heard from uh, email, I've gotten emails from, from families in the neighborhood that said, uh, you know, I, I either do walk right now with my, with my child and uh, I feel unsafe, or I don't walk at all because I feel unsafe. Um, and they are supportive of the of the the pedestrian improvements. Um, I don't know specifically about crossing guards. Crossing guards kind of ebb and flow. Um, I do a lot of work with the schools. Um, crossing guards are are a great um, are a great uh, uh, both adult crossing guards and student uh, patrol. I guess you'd call them. There's a difference. Um, are a great um, uh, strategy. Um, but I know that that takes uh, resources and sometimes um, parents don't want their uh, student being a student patrol um, because they feel unsafe having their student out there. Um, so crossing guards are an option and certainly one that um, that we support, but we've also heard from schools that it's hard to get volunteers or it's hard to get their staff to stay after school or come before school to actually staff those corners. Yep, thanks, Jimmy. Um, a question here about about um, snow, and I, I'll expand this question. Is, is any of the research you have based on studies of, uh, based on studies and areas with snow? And and let's just talk a little bit about what this does mean for snow. I think there's another question further down the list here about plowing. Um, we don't anticipate this has much impact on the city's ability to plow the streets. It does mean that the plow drivers may need to um, modify their routes to, uh, uh, to, to get around the medians. Um, we don't think that will have any substantive impact on the city's overall ability to, to plow the streets. It does mean the city has to, uh, someone has to shovel the, the uh, pedestrian uh, ramps in the middle of the street, and that will be the city will be responsible for shoveling those um, pedestrian spaces on the medians. Um, the safety impacts associated with media with medians. Um, I, I'm not sure if I've ever seen studies that differentiate snow versus not snow areas. Um, but the the general principle of making streets safe for people walking um, and the ability of medians to uh, allow pedestrians to cross. Uh, traffic one direction at a time uh, is the same regardless of snow. Um, let's see, I think we touched on some of these. Um, just a, a one comment here says a lot of, there's a lot of crashes at Highland Parkway in Fairview. Um, we do have some improvements planned for Fairview. We didn't touch on, or for um, the intersection of Highland Parkway and Fairview, we didn't touch on them a lot during this this interview, but we do have some bump outs and some some narrowing proposed at that intersection. Um, it's not a median; it won't impact any turns that people can make at that intersection. But we do think it will make the intersections um, safer for pedestrians crossing, and it will require drivers to make turns a bit more slowly at that intersection, which hopefully overall uh, results in fewer crashes. Um, Uh, 
Oh, a lot of questions about alleys and whether people will uh, be able to turn into and out of alleys. A few questions about specific alleys. Um, I can take this question. None of the medians will prohibit any turning in or out of alleys. Um, so all of the turning movements you currently make in and out of alleys, you will continue to be able to do those. Um, it will not have any impact on um, trash or recycling that is coming up and down the alleys. That will all continue the same way uh, as it does today. Um, Will a left turn still be available at Fairview and Juno when traveling south on Fairview? And I need to remind myself where Juno is. Um, but, oh, Juno, yes. Um, the answer is yes, you will still be able to turn left onto Juno. No, no changes to access at Juno. And I'm just scanning these questions a bit more. Um, this is a question that I think. Um, I'm going to ask Conwin to answer this question. I'm kind of combining a few questions together, but kind of a, a general question of, you know, why isn't a, what about a crosswalk and flashing lights? Why do we need a median? Why can't we just do crosswalks and flashing lights? Then we don't have, then no one has to drive around the block. Then we don't have to impact any, any vehicle routing. Conwin, are you able to speak to how the city um, decides where these different uh, treatments are appropriate? Sure. Um, yep, we have a pretty robust uh, flow chart that we follow to try to be systematic about where we make uh, do treatments um, and what treatments go where based on the conditions of each location. Um, a high, very high level, I would say that anything that involves striping and signs, um, striping in particular, um, require ongoing annual maintenance funding. And a lot of the impetus for putting that uh, flow chart together was to try to get a handle on those ongoing costs. Um, and in addition, uh, paint and signs don't provide any physical presence or barrier, um, whereas bump outs and medians do provide that. Um, so are more of a physical treatment and a, I would say, um, more proven results compared to striping, which have more mixed results. Did that answer the question? Yep, thanks, Hanwin. Um, I see one person has a hand up. Heather, do you want to unmute yourself and ask your question? Yeah, thank you so much. It's been uh, really good to hear a little bit more detail about what you've been trying to, what you're trying to achieve. I have to say that um, I was just going to type in is that based on the meeting today, I was hoping to hear more that would convince me as to why this would be a good idea. Um, and unfortunately, I feel the opposite. I, I feel that our reasonings aren't really grounded in the reality of what the neighbors and the day-to-day -day people are seeing on the road. I mean, I think maybe additional photographs about what, what this could look like would be really helpful. I'm most concerned, um, I'm sitting on the corner of Saunders and Fairview and I've been watching the cars drive the entire time I'm here. And having these cars at this get any closer to the sidewalks, I think would be the biggest concern I have for the students and the children that are in the area. I don't see how putting a median that then has the potential to block visibility in the winter, um, as well as maybe gives people the confidence that they don't see a kid in the middle, so they're not looking on the sides, is gonna help anything, uh, especially when, when you're coming up um, Edgecombe 
there is a speeding problem, but I do think that people don't generally see the crosswalks. I can't even see the crosswalk from where I sit now. Uh, so I think that that's the biggest start is letting people know that these are crossing ways rather than block the roads and bring cars closer to children. Thank you, Heather. I appreciate that. I appreciate that comment. Um, and I appreciate that you that you came to the meeting today with an open mind. Um, I, I agree about the back of curb sidewalks on Fairview. They're certainly not ideal. Uh, I think that's something we we all would like to change if we had the ability to do so. Um, as Jimmy mentioned, we did submit a, um, a a funding request for funding to fully reconstruct the street that might have given us an opportunity to do something different with those sidewalks. Unfortunately, we did not get that funding to do that. Um, you know, you raised kind of an important question about safety of people walking along Fairview compared to safety of people crossing Fairview. And I, I think you're right. This these are treatments that favor people who are trying to cross Fairview um, more so than people who are walking along Fairview. I, I will say that um, the, uh, the the travel lanes that are on Fairview today are quite wide, and I believe that is contributing to the higher speeds that we see on Fairview. Um, we, you know, we do think that medians generally are a traffic calming element and hope that medians are an indication that people should slow down. We are planning to keep this shoulder space on on Fairview uh, because we know it's used frequently by people on bicycles. So there will still be some buffer between the travel lanes and the sidewalks. Um, if there are any other questions, feel free to raise a hand. Um, I just can I chime in one more time? I'm sorry. Um, thank you for that sure. response. I will say I think that maybe the argument around the Fairview Saunders corner is a little bit different than perhaps the Boland Saunders comment. I'm not talking about it from a traffic flow perspective. I think there's very different arguments that are valid around why that one would be a concern. But at Fairview Saunders, the house's front doors open on to Fairview. And so these cross these sidewalks that we use are not just side sidewalks. These are the main sidewalks that our guests come in, our children walk out of, um, people that are taking the buses are using. And so I think that this area in particular should be looked at maybe differently as to that because these are front entrances. So and maybe I can get on a phone call and talk to you a little bit more detail about that. But I think that's maybe being skipped, whereas the other intersections, the houses all face the side roads. And so it, our driveways are also on Fairview. So that is a difference as well. But I'll stop there and I can always call you first hand, Jimmy, too. Thanks, Heather. Um, I think I saw one other hand that went up. John, go ahead. Yeah, hi, thanks, guys. Uh, Jimmy, you and I spoke last week and I appreciated your time. We were talking about the traffic coming northbound Fairview to take a left onto Boland for the high C pickup and drop off lines. Um, I did some uh, counts this week. We had about 60 to 80 cars coming in on Boland from Fairview um, in the mornings. And my concern is with that intersection blocked, that traffic is going to take the path of re least resistance and they're going to make a left turn instead onto Beechwood, um, which is a narrower street. How do you? Um, how do you guys feel about that? What what can we do to avoid traffic coming in that direction? Yeah, thanks for joining, John. Um, Hunwen and I, uh, Hunwen is our, for those of you who didn't catch her introduction, is our, our uh, one of our traffic engineers. And Hunwen, you and I chatted a little bit about this access to Highland Catholic. Um, and uh, I guess I'd turn to you to to talk about what the traffic impacts might be. Yeah, and I'm happy to talk offline about this to John. Um, if there are, I don't know if you're um, a member of that school community and would have um, ability to affect how the operations of the school. Um, in general, I would say that, um, yes, of course, we would prefer that people use different routes. And I, as I look at a map, um, there are um, a, a couple of other routes that would be better if we can reroute traffic to those. In particular, if you're coming from the south, um, taking St. Paul Avenue to the school um, or taking Ford Parkway to the school. Um, 
I understand that people want to be on the school side of the um, of the street for the drop off and the pickup. Um, and I happen to notice that there's um, uh, some some space on Kenneth, and I wonder if we can figure out a way to uh, give people a reason to come down Kenneth Ford Parkway to Kenneth rather than traveling down Bowling. Yeah, and we actually do that already and encourage that from for the parents coming from the north. Um, Jimmy had made a mention about taking Fairview to Ford, Ford to Kenneth. That's two left turns at stoplights during the morning rush, and it's just not likely that's going to happen. Um, and coming from St. Paul Avenue, to your point, drops people off on the other side of the street from the school, which the school absolutely does not want to see. They want kids dropped off right on the curb side of the school. So just something to think about. Uh, I guess my next question too is just regarding those medians. Uh, uh, why do they need to be as long as they are? And why can't we consider two smaller medians that would still allow left-hand turns? I don't think left-hand turns seem to be the problem when the stated intention is um, slower traffic and pedestrian safety. We could still achieve that, but still keep our left-hand turns. Can you talk more about why, why that's so important to stop those left turns? I don't, I don't understand that part. Sure, I, I guess I can. I'd invite other other people to jump in too. Um, uh, the left turns also present um, another conflict point. So if you're walking across the intersection across Fairview, a left turn from one of the streets onto Fairview um, is yet another conflict point uh, between someone walking and someone taking a left turn onto Fairview. Um, so a full closure eliminates that that conflict point. Ruben or Hunwen, do you have anything to add? Um, thanks, thanks, Jimmy. I was um, reading some of the chats and was a bit distracted. Um, I, I, I guess I would just clarify and and I'll, before I even say this, I'll acknowledge John that I don't know that you're going to find this to be a satisfying answer, but just to just to clarify, I don't know that we went into this process thinking, gosh, we got to figure out how to stop left turns here. Um, I don't think we came into this thinking that left turn left turns were explicitly a problem, but what we did come into the process thinking was we need to figure out how to get pedestrians safely across a busy street and medians are um, just really one of the best tools on the in the toolbox and it's um, uh, an impact of that is in fact a left turns um, and left turns are generally associated with some of the with with a lot of crashes and some of the most severe crashes. And so it is a, um, you know, I, I'd say it is a is a nice to have. It's a good improvement to eliminate left turns, um, but just wanted to clarify that wasn't necessarily the initial goal of the project. OK, so there is an opportunity to maybe do smaller medians that would still realize the two main goals of slower traffic and pedestrian safety, but keep the left turns. Uh, my other question is, if you do eliminate the left turns, it's just going to change the flow of traffic and put more traffic on the inner residential streets, especially Howell and Davern, as people make U-turns to try to get around. Um, and you guys had said earlier, Jimmy, your quote was, um, we want to encourage you to take streets meant for higher volumes. Wouldn't that mean keeping people on Fairview and not pushing them off into the residential streets to make U-turns and go around to get to their street? And I say that respectfully. I'm not trying to be a jerk in saying that, but it just seems like you're you're adding more um, more blocks traveled on the residential streets than in taking people off of Fairview where the traffic is intended to be. I'm going. John, I would think I would. Yeah, uh, I'll take this one, Jimmy. Um, I think that kind of two different things. Um, what Jimmy, I think, was trying to say, he was talking about, you know, if the people who are rerouting, we hope that they will take other high volume streets meant to those streets meant for higher volumes rather than taking um, low volume residential streets as their alternative. Uh, the people who have to reroute because their destination is on one of those streets that they can't directly turn onto um, based on the volumes that we have are a very small number 
And so the trade-off of adding those volumes onto other low volume streets is a worthwhile trade-off for the pedestrian safety benefits on Fairview. Um, we, we can absolutely follow up on that if you like to. I just want to follow up on your um, left turn question. One of the other reasons for doing a full um, median through the intersection as opposed to um, two small ones leaving the middle of the intersection open um, is just that, you know, they'd be turning, the left turns would be coming out of the through lane now. So they would be um, both blocking traffic behind them and uh, not have as good visibility of oncoming traffic. Actually, that's how it, it is on Saunders right now. There is no turn lane at Saunders. Right. So it wouldn't be a change. Yeah. Really. Well, they would be separated by that median, right? If we build the two medians, instead of being sort of right next to that center line, they would be separated by the median. So that it's a it's a little bit different and there would be less space for passing. I absolutely expect that people will pass on the right if someone is stopped to turn left and waiting for a gap in traffic. Um, and so it just, it with the volume of traffic on Fairview, um, that is a harder trade-off uh, something to consider, but not a, not an obvious uh, choice to make, I think, in terms of some places we would do just the two short medians because allowing left turns is just not that big of a deal. Here, I think it is a bigger deal and uh, it seemed worthwhile to propose the, the full median given the trade-offs. Could I please ask a question regarding this? Okay, earlier in the um, in the call, you had said that, you know, the survey showed that most of the people using this are the residential people. Is that, am I, was that correct in saying? Like the, the people using this area or, you know, this traffic is people who are in the, you know, in this area. Meaning it's not, you know, like Snelling and where they're coming through. So I'm just curious then, would we start, like look at how the residents are using this area um, as far as like the schools go? I too had kids in Highland Catholic and use those crossing streets and did not feel as threatened um, or, you know, I felt like it was okay. My kids were also crossing guards, but I'm just curious, is that who used, uh, because my whole hold back is I would just love to see when the Ford plant comes in, how we're going to, you know, how that's going to impact this. And if this really is the right, um, uh, if these medians are really right in being safe for this area or our area. Thank you. Thanks. I'll, I'll jump in and I'll, I want to note that we're at time. I'll, I want to answer the question, but we are at time. So that, that will be our last question of the day. Um, I'll ask Jimmy to kind of remind us what our next opportunities are for um, uh, for uh, providing feedback on this. Um, but I, I, I think overarching kind of purpose and goal of the project, part of what I would say is part of what we're trying to achieve with the project is ensuring that these local neighborhood streets are appropriate, are, are attractive only to people who have reason to be on these local neighborhood streets because they live here or they're making a delivery on these streets. Um, I think part of um, part of the concern about uh, about people driving through the neighborhood that, you know, from the Ford site, for example, um, I think it is improvements like medians like this that help to ensure that doesn't happen by making um, by making sure that all of these neighborhood side streets are not through routes um, and they don't they don't go. Uh, uh, they, they don't let, allow people to go more than a couple blocks on these neighborhood streets, and they they will intentionally push um, through traffic out to the Ford Parkways and Montreal's uh, adjacent to that. Um, so, Jimmy, can you remind us one more time what opportunities people have for um, further engagement on this? And then yeah. I'd suggest we wrap things up. Thanks, everybody. And I think, uh, you know, there might be uh, lingering questions out there and um, I am available, Ruben and Hunwen. We can we can chat some more about this. Um, so I'm clicking to the screen just so you can see it on your screen um, for upcoming opportunities. 
again, thank you for being here today. I know this is the middle of the day and you're taking time out of your day to learn more about a project that uh, maybe you support, maybe you don't. So thank you for being here. Um, there is a Highland District Council Transportation Fair this Thursday at 6.30 p.m. Uh, that at, at Gloria Day Lutheran Church, I believe that's on the corner of Highland Parkway and Snelling. Don't quote me on that, 700 Snelling. Uh, many different projects are gonna be discussed. There will be agents, agency representation from MnDOT, from the city of St. Paul, from Ramsey County. So you can learn about all sorts of different transportation projects happening in the neighborhood. Um, that's this Thursday. There's also another Fairview project specific meeting next Wednesday, May 17th at 530. And that's in the Highland Middle School cafeteria, the middle school, not the high school. Um, and so you're welcome to join us there. Um, some combination of me and Ruben and Hunwen will be there again. And the information shared will be very similar to what you heard today. And you can also contact me at the at, at, at this here. Um, my information is also on stpaul.gov slash Fairview resurfacing. And you can call me at that phone number too. So thank you all so for Hiley, being here. Yes, you leave a, lo a lot of time for people that at that point in time because there has not been enough time to ask you questions here and to state our beliefs. So please I, plan on being at Gloria Day and the middle school for a long time. Okay. That sounds good. This is the neighborhood's decision and you need to take that into account. And we surely don't feel that way. <laughs> I completely agree with you. We do not feel that way. It's a problem looking for a solution. But good yeah, luck. I concur being jammed down our throat and there will be more accidents than there are now. Totally agree. Totally, totally agree. I agree also. Good this luck. This might be something that needs to be totally reevaluated. Is the city open to that? I don't think so. I think the city has a plan. They're going to jam it down our throats. And I think the city also probably has money to spend. And if they don't spend it, either it's federal or state money, then they're, they're going to lose it. It's, we're in a use or lose situation. And I would love Jimmy to answer that question at Gloria Day in middle school. I'm also hearing a lot of, we've um, looked at the uh, traffic um, on, on pieces of paper, but I, I haven't heard that people have been out here for several hours observing or actually measuring the traffic volumes and the impact to the streets, such as Highland Parkway. And Jimmy, if you're on, I would highly suggest that you, you and your team come out here in the morning and watch High Seas Parents and how that is set up. And I'd also like to share some data years. who's afraid to cross the street, not personal data, but I'd like to know where that's coming from. And I don't know if we, the citizens, are all talking to ourselves and they have left already. Jimmy, it'd be nice to know if you're still there. Don't even know if you are. Yeah, I'm still here. I'm listening. Thanks. Great, because I, I really think that I, I think there's a lot of people who are on this phone call who care. And they care because that's why we're taking the time out. You, you know, you got to come out boots on the ground, people. I agree with that. Yeah. It wasn't done ahead of time. You know, Snelling stuff went out months ago already, and that's for a 2024 project. You want, you're going to be putting a, a digger out here in a month. You know, how can you even stop this at this point? I don't even know. I don't think you literally can. And it'd be nice if you would be honest enough to answer if you can change this at this point. Can you stop it and wait a year? No, probably not. Can you? Jimmy, can you? Yep, this is, this is Jimmy. Yeah, what's yeah, for an answer? I, right, I would say that uh, similar to what I said at the, at the top of the meeting was uh, we are trying to uh, learn if there's something that um, that we didn't think of, that uh, we're not aware of, um, to to change the plan going forward. Um, well, it is. We asked, understand that you didn't think of asking the citizens that live here. Did that and cross pay the your mind? Pay your salary. We, we pay a ton of taxes here. Why don't you survey the neighborhood before imposing these kind of things? 
And use actual data, actual traffic numbers. Traffic studies. I don't see any kind of traffic studies. I don't see accident numbers. I don't see numbers of people who have complained. The people who complain that they can't cross the street, how are you going to find out about all of us who cross the street? Fine. And our children do too. We don't complain. Only the complaints get to you. The people who are happy, that doesn't get to you. How do you measure that? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Um, I, another thing I mentioned was, you know, just because something is safe and just because one person thinks something is safe or they don't have a problem with it doesn't mean that there aren't other people who choose not to walk uh, or cross. Well, then. Right, but, how do you, but how do you measure those of us who think it's safe? Where Where is our voice heard? Our voice wasn't heard. And I question where this data is coming from. People have called in and said they don't want to cross the street. Well, put put some kind of survey or something together that canvases more of this neighborhood rather than you guys deciding we're going to put these in here because of some pedestrian safety thing that, you know, doesn't seem to have a lot of weight here. When the road, I mean, I've lived here 35 years. This road was remilled probably seven years ago. There's probably going to have to be remilled again in seven years, even with all your new fancy stuff. And the last time y'all did it, a year later, they dug a hole of a strip right down the middle, off to the side. And if you come and look, you will see where all of these holes started to lay a cable. Like at, in a brand new street, they laid a cable. They dug it up. They The integrity of the surface was ruined. But this stuff doesn't last forever unless you're going to pay to put concrete in. I mean, you, you're all the professionals. And so this is going to have to be reworked in seven years anyway. Um, without the, the impact studies of what, I mean, I as a citizen sit here and go, I'm not going to drive down any way to Cleveland Avenue. I'm going to Snelling because once the 5,000 people are living down in the Ford plant, nobody's going to want to go down there. And so all of this stuff is going to migrate. And granted, you're saying, you know, well, it, it, it will help people from zipping through. Well, people still zip through. And Beachwood Avenue is the narrowest street. There is a group home on Beachwood Avenue. There are houses before Howell that do not have garages. And eventually you will impose one-sided parking because it will be so dangerous on Beachwood Avenue. And I feel bad for people who still have kids in Highland Catholic. Mine are out because it's going to be, put whatever word you want in there. You got to come out between Fairview and then there's no stop sign to how, and it curves around. That curve will cause accidents in and of itself, and then people have to turn left onto Bowling, and they won't even be able. I mean, it's it's gonna not work, folks. I'm just telling you, it's not gonna work. And people inherit their houses around here, and I'm an outsider from New York, and I can tell you how many people inherit their houses here. So they will. This this community does not change very easily, and the people are the same people for generations. And I think, Jimmy, you came from this area. Not sure what that means. Well, you should have a, a concept uh, about how Highland works. Um, I'm just going to note that I have to jump off. I, I think um, I absolutely encourage all of you to submit your comments uh, in the various ways that Jimmy has made available. Um, as a general note, these kind of, kind of treatments have been used around the city and around the country and generally have the effects that we're looking for. Um, looking for. And this, this community's not looking for it. This, everyone all is not they looking for can, it. They can always be undone if there was some huge mistake, as, as you guys are, are yeah. afraid it will happen. Um, and and there are absolutely uh, individual circumstances on at every location, and we try to identify them, and that's why we're here. We're trying to hear all the different situations that you all see in your neighborhood um, that we may not be aware of. We do have traffic counts going back a ways um, for the neighborhood, so it's not completely uh, unstudied. Um, and from what we've seen so far, there's nothing uh, 
significantly different from other locations where we've done these treatments. Um, but that does not mean that there are not, as I said, uh, special circumstances with every location. And that exactly is it, it is exactly why we go out to the public. And I understand your frustration with this being very late uh, with construction potentially starting sometime this summer. Um, but that does not mean that we can't change the plan still. We at the city are pretty fluid. Um, so please do submit your comments uh, in the various ways. I do have to jump off. Um, I'm guessing Jimmy does as well as we have other meetings. Uh, but there are uh, other opportunities to submit your comments and um, we do want you to. So with that, I'm gonna jump off. <clears throat> Thanks, everybody.